Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to another review, unboxing I guess, more than anything. And this time it's from this kit, from Airfix. And actually the actual unboxing I'm doing is for this one here. Same thing, just I guess different uh, year. Since the labeling of the box is uh, slightly different. Um, but I'm kind of fixing this box here because uh, it became undone. Oops, sorry for the shaking. But it's basically the same kit. I'm just going to show you the box real quick. So there's the front you'll see. Nice uh, artwork for the aircraft. Real nice, actually. Um, I'm actually thinking of framing this one because it looks that good to me anyways. But I don't know if I want to actually uh, frame this one or this one. Well, actually, you know what? Let me put this other one aside. We'll just go with this one. Doesn't matter. Shouldn't be too much of a problem because I got clamps on it right now. But anyway, so this is the kit. It's one one forty four scale from Airfix. You can see there. And this is the Dash two hundred actually. So, uh, got these uh fairly cheap, I guess. Uh, paint no more than uh thirty. Uh, found them on a here locally on a German uh. Well, through the German eBay, and much cheaper than my uh, American counterparts. One way too much for such a small kit. And it's not even these; it's the uh, later versions of it. I iterations, uh, probably what eighty-eight. Uh, reissues. Think uh, it was that white box with the aircraft in the front. But anyway, so. There's two reasons why I got this one. Well, actually three. First of all, the price. Second, uh, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and third, there are some decals that I'm interested in getting for the Mexican Air Force version of the 737. And those were really nice and they're really attractive, so... I needed this kit for those, so that's another reason. And of course, the box art is nice too. But let's get on with the box art and the box in itself. You can see here it's the pictures of it, some other aircraft models available from that time period. I think this was from 68 or 69, I'm not sure. Maybe the instructions will show the copyright date. Then here on the side, the same picture. Other side, you got some other models there from Series 3 and Series 4. This box in the Series 3. And you got that one there. And the end is also the same as the box art. So, next up I'll go ahead and show you the instructions and decals. Uh, here are the decals for Lufthansa and uh, they've been they're a little bit yellowed nothing a little sunlight can't fix I'm sure but and they do look usable still but they are really thick I mean you gotta remember these are like from the 60s late 60s so yeah, I don't think cartographics ex existed back then. <laughs> but they're still usable though, but I of course won't be using these. And then the instructions, let's go simple two page fold out. Oh yeah, let me see if the copyright date is listed here somewhere. see it. Let's see, is there something in the back maybe? Mm, nope. Okay, well, if you guys are interested in what date this box was actually produced, kit, I guess uh, Google is one place to find out. But I think it was 69 because I was looking at some uh, videos too and 
one of the YouTubers mentioned that I think it was a 1969 copyright date. And I don't even see it here on the box either. Okay. So anyway, so front of the manual tells you a little story, a bit of history of the 737. Excuse me. Let me move this to the side here. And um, then we go on to the first page here. Mm -mm -mm. Then you have some special instructions for assembly. And then we get the first step, which involves actually quite a lot of parts. There you go. And you can see there one reason why I got this kit is for the open windows. And it actually has uh, clear parts for it. So that's really cool. Unlike, I think, uh, well, what brand is it? Minicraft, I think. And, oh, what's that other brand? Can't remember where basically the fuseless is just solid and you use decals for the windows, but yeah. And then let's move on here. Step two involves the landing gear and the actuators for the flaps. If that is that what they're called? Pretty sure though. Then step three, if you want the gear up. And then some color codes there. And then last page, which is the paint guide. And of course you see Lufthansa. Pretty basic, but I do like the kit though. If you remember, I built the 737 with the Southwest uh, livery on it. And I don't think I did a review for that kit that I remember, but from what I remember, that kit had a lot of um, uh, flash. And boy, I can't remember, I think. Did I have the windows open? I can't remember. I'll have to look at my video and my um, building sequence and see if the windows were open also on the, on the fuselage. But anyways, that's the instructions. And the other reason as far as parts go why I got this kit is because it comes with a display stand. Pretty cool, huh? I wish Airfix would do that with their current kits, but I guess it's too much money to produce these parts. I don't know. I don't see how it would be. They just need to clean up their molds, I would think. Logic tells me that would be the case, but I don't know. Maybe they have different molds now. But anyways, here are the clear parts. Uh, as far as I can see... They're pretty clear, and I don't see any indentations on the actual windows from the molding process, so some of them are not too um, clear though. I don't know if you can see that there. I'm looking at my screen here, but it's not really uh, clear as if they're... Well, I think you can see it there in the reflection. Yeah, there's some sinkholes there, maybe. But uh, I'm guessing you can just um, sand them smooth when you put the piece on the aircraft. I'm sure they protrude a little bit. And I'll show you that in a second because I got a piece here by itself and we'll see how it fits on the fuselage. So, speaking of parts, let's move on to these the main pieces. And uh, instructions out of the way. <clears throat> so moving down here, let's look at the fuselage. Let's start off with that. You can see 
it's uh, pretty well molded race panel lines of course and you can see like uh, the molding uh, lines I guess swirls from the molding process <laughs> almost looks like a shark kind of those gray sharks which ones are they Makos not Mako uh, oh sand shark maybe I can't remember but it, it's it's smooth and flush so no no problems there um, the panel lines are uh, pretty crisp though I do have some um, scratches here from the parts being loose in the box but really no big problems there maybe a little bit of sanding fine sanding would take care of most of these blemishes if not all uh, yeah a little bit of flash here on the front there you go and but still with this aircraft oh this one actually has the indentations for the cockpit windows for the uh, front part there the one that I built didn't even have that so you can guess I guess you can use that as a guide oh and then you go there blemish there sinkhole from the molding process so that'll have to be putty but and there's another one but I'm sure it's easy fixes nothing nothing major you can fix that right away whoops then inside got that little piece there for the cabin which here's the piece right here maybe I'll detail that a bit since the I will be using the window piece for that and then of course the inside part and let's actually try that little piece of window to see how it fits you see I'm sure it goes a certain way yep so let's just try somewhere so so far if it's pretty good oops sorry so there you go it does fit it's a bit loose though you can see the gaps there and but is it flush uh, not really they're not really flush with the fuselage piece but I'm guessing no that would be too much work So they're not flush. Oh, sorry again, off off the screen again. But I'm sure once you glue it, one way to do it is I think what I'll probably try and do is uh, sand them smooth, or get most of the blemishes out and try and sand them a little bit so they're nice and clear. Oh, and I'm off the screen again. Um, and then glue them, glue them in place, and I guess once that's done, probably put some uh, uh, Vallejo putty, you know, that you can just like remove it with some water and a cotton swab so it's nice and smooth and just covers up all the little gaps there I think that's probably what I'll try and do because I do want to use the clear parts but it's not bad I think the putty will fix that up nice nicely and um, I might even have to uh, probably uh, go with the Dremel tool and thin the plastic out a little bit so probably the windows can stick out and then sand it and it'd be even flush with the plastic there so that's another idea 
Hmm. We'll see how that goes. But there's one piece. Now the other half of the fuselage is pretty much the same. Well molded. Panel line's pretty sharp. Mm, and this one doesn't really have too much flash. Some of course sanding will be needed here from all the scratching from being in the box so long. Parts rubbing against each other. Maybe a little bit of flash there. And let's see how these parts fit. Alright, sorry about that. Son came and asked me to go upstairs. But let's see how it fits. Let's see how these parts fit real quick. Oh, come on. So, they actually fit pretty good. Not too big gaps. Of course, you know, a little sand in here and there. But the fit is pretty, pretty good overall. So not too bad, not too bad. Then let's move on to these parts here. A lot of flash on the wheels though. But you know, it's easy fix of course. And this one's actually had detail on it. I don't know if you can see that, see on the rims, wow. Nice. The other ones didn't from the 737, the Southwest one. That kit, I don't remember having this detail on there. And of course, that's if you want the, the wheels up. Okay, another interruption. But anyways, moving on. So here are the landing gear parts and uh, turbine fan blades. Nice. Nicely detailed for the time period, I think. Some uh, flash on here on the struts. But they can easily be cleaned up with a X-Acto knife. And of course you got your little puncher f here. For the decals, if you, you know, to punch them out from the windows. Of course I probably won't be using that. And then of course the back well for the cockpit so that's that part oh yeah and of course the stabulators those have a lot of flash there so that'll be need to be cleaned up but otherwise not bad so next part or next sprue you got your actuators doors luggage doors and actually these are the wheels portrayed as uh, being raised so there we go some sinkholes there from the molding process that'll be, need to be cleaned up but overall nice nice parts and then you got the engines here and let's try these out and see how these fit. Oops, wrong part. Okay, here we go. So let's see how these pieces fit. And they actually fit pretty good. Pretty good fit. There we go. So that's where the pieces would fit in. And the other one, let's see how this one's fit. Nice, nice. Nice fit overall too. And actually, panel lines line up too. And then we got the wings. Last piece is there. Oh, there we go. And really nicely detailed too. And then you have here the, uh, what's the part called for the wings, the 
Vortex veins, I think. Those are nicely molded, but they look a bit thick for the scale. So I don't know if uh, maybe with a brand new blade you can thin those down. I don't know if I want to try that though, but we'll see. The panel lines for the slats and the flaps and ailerons, they are a bit thick though. But I think what I want to try and do with this one, or see if I can do it, is put them in the extended lowered position. That would be a challenge though, but I'm going to see if I can try and do that. I wanted to do that with the other one, but yeah. Changed my mind and I just wanted to get that one done. But let me see if I can try it with this one. So that's that piece and let's see how the pieces fit. And nice. They fit really good. Oops. So nice nice fit there's the bottom part so that's it that's it for this kit so that concludes this unboxing video sorry if I had a little too many uh, pauses in there but if you can find one of these kits and of course if you like uh, general aviation get one if it's not too expensive. I don't think it's worth more than $30. But that's just my opinion. Especially these older kits. If you can get it with the display stand, go for it. Definitely worth it for no more than 30 like I said. And with that, I'll see you on the next unboxing. Which will probably be... Well, I got two more that I want to do. And that's this one. The DC-9. And the MPC version of the 727, which I think it was an Airfix release. Alright, see you in the next one. Bye.